What if every super region was a nation in 1444? Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be checking out what would happen if every super region was a nation in 1444. Before we begin, consider leaving a like and subscribing if you enjoy this video. Only 10% of you are subscribed so it would really mean a lot. Let's get started. So as you can see, I've made every super region or subcontinent in the game into one nation. So as you can see, we have France representing the Western Europe subcontinent. I honestly had no idea which nation to give this to. So I just spun a random wheel with a couple of countries and France popped out. So I gave it to them. We have Russia representing the Eastern Europe subcontinent. I think that was pretty fitting. We have Morocco representing the Northern Africa subcontinent and Congo representing the Southern Africa subcontinent. Then we have the Ottomans representing the Levant and Persia representing Persia of course. I don't know what other nation could it be to be honest. We of course have Bharat or India representing India. It was a toss up between Bharat and Hindustan but since most of India is Hindu I did give it to Bharat. Then we have a wild card over here the Mongol Empire one of the most powerful nations in EU4 representing the Tartari super region. I gave the Far East to Japan I thought it would be only fitting. We have Ming representing the China super region or subcontinent. Ming is actually the only nation to have lost provinces when I was creating this so basically they lost some provinces to Japan and some to the Mongol Empire but they did gain a few over here and the island of Taiwan right here. Then we have Siam representing the East Indies subcontinent finally. So those are the 11 nations that will be battling it out in a battle royale style competition. Like always I left the new world uncolonized so we can see some colonization action. This is what the great powers list looks like on December 1st 1444. We have France with 4.5k development almost double the next biggest nation which is Russia. At number three we have Siam. At number four we have Bharat. Number five is Morocco. Number six the Ottomans. Number seven Ming and at number eight we have the Mongol Empire. Japan Persia and Congo didn't quite make the cut. All nations have feudalism embraced, even Congo because they did get provinces with feudalism. Hopefully no vassal releasing shenanigans will happen due to governing capacity because I gave all of these nations 5k governing capacity. That should be more than enough for them to not release vassals. Make your predictions in the comments right now before I unpause and let the game roll. My predictions are Ming and Japan will be the biggest losers in this part of the world. Over here I think the Ottomans and Persia are not gonna be that strong and I think Congo is gonna lose out to Morocco. So it's been exactly 30 years since the start of the game and let's take a look at all the changes that have happened. So the first war was the Ottomans against Persia. So the Ottomans declared on Persia and in that moment Morocco also declared on the Ottomans. The Ottomans beat Persia. They took some provinces from them over here in this region as we can see and then turned their attention to Morocco. In that moment Congo also declared on Morocco and they took some provinces from them in this area right here. Then the Ottomans also defeated Morocco taking provinces from them here in the Horn of Africa and some provinces in the Tripolitania area right here. So the Ottomans at that point have won two wars, Morocco have lost two wars, then the Ottomans declared on Russia and took Constantinople and Kaffa right here. So the Ottomans have won three wars already. Then Persia feeling defeated by the Ottomans declared on Bharat and they took quite a bunch of provinces over here in the border region as we can see. Siam also declared on Bharat and took some provinces up here and down here. The Mongol Empire declared on Japan and beat them and then Ming declared on Japan and also beat them and now the Mongol Emperor declared on Japan again so this is their second war against Japan as you can see this is basically what Japan looked like and this is what they look like now so they have lost almost half of their continental holdings the only nation that hasn't been in any war so far is France I guess they like chilling at the number one spot so it has been another 30 to 40 years and there have been a bunch of changes. So first of all, Congo declared on Morocco and Congo did win once again against Morocco. They took some provinces in this region and made them release Ethiopia and Darfur. And they also made them release Medibari. The Ottomans defeated Morocco once again, taking even more provinces from them. We're here in the Tunis area and some more provinces in the Horn of Africa. The Ottomans, France and the Mongol Empire declared war on Russia. 
the Mongol Empire didn't take anything. France only took this one province right here and the Ottomans took quite a few provinces actually, most of them in southern Greece. Two provinces over here in Thrace right next to their capital, which actually isn't even their capital so they haven't taken the decision to make Constantinople their capital. It's in Huda Vendigor right now and they took some provinces in Crimea. Trebizond is also a vassal of Russia, now I don't know how that happened. Siam did release some vassals, I guess they are still over governing capacity. They are pretty stable and pretty strong because they did just defeat Ming in a war, taking these two provinces over here. So Ming isn't as weak as I thought they would be. They have allied India, but they're probably gonna lose again soon to the Mongol Empire and Siam once again. Japan is pretty stable after that second war with the Mongol Empire. France has taken exploration ideas, so we will see some colonizing. And they actually have started to colonize, as we can see they have two provinces over here in the Caribbean. And we're back in the year 1553. Of course, it's still the age of discovery. How could it be the age of reformation when the reformation hasn't spawned? There is only one Catholic country. Well, two to be honest. I guess France got that event to release the knights from Malta. So they did. And they are allied to France. Taking a look at Africa first, Morocco did once again lose to Congo. Congo got some more provinces over here and then they lost to the Ottomans again with the Ottomans connecting their lands in the Horn of Africa with their lands over here in Nubia. And they did take even more provinces over in Tunis and are starting to creep into the Algier area. After that, the Ottomans, with the help of their allies France and the Mongol Empire, all declared on Russia. I don't think the Ottomans managed to actually take anything from Russia in that war and neither did France as far as I can see. But the Mongol Empire did get these four provinces right here and now Russia has have declared a reconquest against the Mongol Empire with the help of their allies Persia and Siam. So the Mongol Empire is fighting Russia, Persia and Siam and Crete. But the Ottomans are also on the side of the Mongol Empire so this is the war that's going on right now. Who do you think will win? Bharat have also taken exploration ideas. So we might see some Indian colonies soon perhaps over here in this region. Oh and we do already have two provinces that have been colonized by Bharat. So these two provinces right here and they will establish Bharat Australia and I might actually force spawn the reformation if it still doesn't spawn in the next 20 to 30 years just so we can see the advancement of ages and so absolutism can spawn. So it's been another 30 to 40 years and I did have to manually spawn the Protestant Reformation just so we can get on with the ages and I did spawn it in France. Honestly not too much is gonna come out of this and of course no country will actually go Protestant and the Age of Discovery will end in about one or two years. Morocco have been getting beat up even more this time by the Ottomans. Congo doesn't seem to have declared once again but the Ottomans are pushing even more and more into this direction and down here too. So Morocco is definitely the weakest nation out of all the super regions that we have created. The Mongol Empire just lost a huge war. So it was the Mongol Empire and the Ottomans versus Siam, Persia, Russia and Japan. Siam declared on the Mongol Empire. They lost and Siam took some provinces over here and they made them release Chahar. Persia also got one province back which it had previously lost and the Ottomans also lost Burgas and Constantinople once again to Russia. France also has taken one more province from Russia. France is literally the least involved. Oh, they took one more province here. France is literally the least involved in wars out of all the countries. They're mostly focusing on, well, upgrading monuments. As we can see, they have Versailles up to level two, Notre Dame to level three. They got St. Peter's Basilica up to level two, and they've also established another one in Brazil. And we also have Bharati Australia. Yep. So that's how things are going now. Now we're waiting for the age of absolutism the next time we'll be back in about 20 to 30 years now it's 1625 and let's see what everyone has been up to of course today's biggest loser morocco they have been losing even more to congo with congo taking these provinces in the gulf of guinea areas. They're also having some rebel problems right now with Fulani separatists over here, Darfur separatists, Funj separatists, and they've also lost a bunch of land up here to the Ottomans once again with the Ottomans literally being right next to their capital of Fez. And they lost even more land over here. And now the biggest changes have been happening in Asia actually with the Mongol Empire losing to the Russia-Persia-Siam alliance. This is similar to the last video we did where 
Russia, Persia and Byzantium were in a triple alliance the entire game, well until Byzantium got PU'd by the Mughals, so if you haven't seen that cursed video go ahead and check it out. But in this video Russia, Persia and Siam are the triple alliance and they have been beating down the Mongol Empire, with Russia taking back provinces that they lost while also moving into the Tartari super region as we can see they have some provinces here and here, Persia have been taking some in the Transoxiana region and Siam have been pushing into Tibet sort of. And not only that, they've also lost provinces to Ming as we can see, Ming has taken some provinces over here in Inner Mongolia as well as some right here. What's the reason the Mongol Empire are this weak? Probably their weak economy to be honest. And even in games where Portugal isn't supposed to exist, literally we have Portuguese Colombia right here. I guess some things never change. All jokes aside though, Portugal did pop out from Madeira and the Azores. I'm guessing this happened due to rebels or someone forced Morocco to release them. And we have Indian California. And India have also taken over almost all of Australia with three more nations remaining. And honestly, they're doing a pretty good job colonizing, but they're not doing a very good job with their continental holdings. So it has been another 30 or so years and expansion has definitely ramped up. Congo keeps destroying Morocco. I honestly didn't expect this. I thought Congo would be maybe this size by now being taken over over by the Ottomans and Morocco, but actually Congo is very powerful. As you can see, they've taken more provinces from Morocco here, and right now they are in another war against Morocco in the Congolese conquest of Zazao. Baharati, California is also doing pretty good, although they do seem to be losing to this North American nation, the Yokuts right here. The Ottomans have once again taken back Constantinople from Russia, and this is their constant back and forth over here with a few provinces here and there in the Balkans. And they also lost one province here, the province of Danzig to France. Will we see Napoleon in Moscow this time? Stay tuned. Siam have expanded a lot into Ming. Look at all the provinces they have taken. They've probably taken more than a dozen provinces and this was two wars so they declared on Ming, got some provinces then once again and they got even more provinces in their war with Japan and Japan also took back their initial provinces over here as well as one more. So Japan has grown slightly but like we remember they did lose provinces to the Mongol Empire right here. And speaking of the Mongol Empire, they have also expanded into Ming. So basically they took back some provinces that they lost over here and they took some more provinces over here which they lost as well. I don't know why but the AI loves doing border gore like this obviously. Why not just take a bunch of provinces that are together? And the same thing has happened over here. We have some Mongolian provinces over here and over here which are separated from them. Baharati Australia is in full swing. They do have the entire continent now which is pretty cool. So expansion is definitely ramping up but we do have some strong alliances which prevent a lot of conquering. The strongest alliance network does still seem to be the Siam, Persia and Russia alliance which Japan has also joined being allied to Russia and Siam. So now it's 1690 almost the age of revolutions and let me tell you once again the Russia, Persia, Siam alliance have dominated. Russia declared a war against the Mongol Empire and it was Russia, Persia and Siam versus the Ottomans and the Mongol Empire. This was a decisive victory for this alliance right here. Russia managed to take back Constantinople once again. Now I don't know how many times this province has swapped hands. Russia, Byzantium, Ottomans, Ottomans, Russia, Byzantium, Ottomans, 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 Russia. As we can see it got swapped around a bunch of times and Russia did take some more provinces from the Ottomans here and here as well. Persia did take a province or two from India in the meantime and Russia did take quite a lot of provinces from the Mongol Empire actually. If we go into the subcontinent view we can see that basically all of these provinces right here as well as some right here got taken over by Russia. So now Russia is bigger than they were at the start. The Mongol Empire hasn't actually been expanding and they have been in decline, losing almost every war they've had against this alliance network and they only managed to get some provinces from Ming. Speaking of Ming, look what Siam did to them. So I don't exactly know why Siam is the most aggressive nation. They do seem to have the best alliance network right now with Russia, Persia and Japan and as you know their ideas are insane. Just 
first look at them, Siam have one of the best national idea sets in the game. They're basically the new Mughals, to be honest, and they are really strong. They did take a few more provinces from Bharat as well. Over in Africa, Congo took out a huge piece of land from Morocco, as we can see right here. They managed to take over all of these provinces and, and these six provinces over here as well for some reason. Either way, Morocco have been declared on by France right now. And the interesting thing is, after Congo beat down Morocco so many times, they decided to guarantee them probably to protect them from the Ottomans and France. But I guess that didn't work. And now France are just pouring in troops into Morocco. Now look at these stacks. We got a 20k stack here, 50k right here, another 50k right here, a 200k stack with more marching in and look at the size of their army this is insane to see and look they even have troops stationed over here a 256 ship stack they've built the keel canal as well let's see if the ottomans have built the suez canal they haven't and the portuguese are in panama like i said portugal i actually did forget about them so they're still over here their capital is right here in the azores and they're doing a little colonization action they are allied to france so that is helping them out a lot so those are the main wars right now those are the main aggressors russia persia and siam so it's 1723 the age of revolutions is in full swing and some of these nations they have been going crazy so let's check out everything that has happened i think the first thing you can notice is how huge congo is they've just kept beating down on morocco and they've gotten all the way to here so congo is definitely a huge huge surprise probably the biggest surprise of the campaign to be honest the ottomans haven't been doing much in fact they've been losing as we can see they've lost some provinces to persia over here and they've lost provinces to russia russia once again has constantinople and they've even taken some provinces here too which is pretty strange this war just ended not even a year ago so that's why you can see all these russian troops over here and once again you may have guessed it was russia persia and siam versus the mongol empire and the ottomans persia took some land from the ottomans and the mongol empire russia took some land from the ottomans and they took a lot from the mongol empire as you can see this is the tartari region and look how far russia has come they've basically taken half of what the mongol empire started with and the mongol empire have lost some provinces in tibet as well to barat and siam and Javan have kept drilling into ming as well japan even has beijing right now and some other provinces over here as well and the mongol empire is collapsing very quickly as soon as their truces run out with them they declare again and again and again so it's 1760 now and for the first time in one of these what if scenarios we have a nation that has gone revolutionary and it is siam as we can see here's the revolutionary map mode and it is spreading to parts of japan and parts of ming as well but it's definitely awesome to see that their flag is a uh, well let's just say it's not that good aside from that siam has been pummeling Ming even more and look at the size of Ming right now they even lost to Japan once again and Siam once again Japan even took land down here and over here either way Japan has also expanded into the Mongol Empire taking all of these lands up here and the Mongol Empire is basically irrelevant at this point they also got pummeled by Russia and now Russia borders Japan and Ming and not the Mongol Empire I mean just look at how much land they have taken and the Mongol Empire have been relegated to these provinces right here here, some provinces right here and a few more up here now look at that name placement i think they're in contention with russia for the biggest name on the map right now they even took some provinces from the ottomans and they took some more from morocco right here so kudos to congo they are still fetishes they haven't converted to catholic from that event i guess because they don't border any catholic nation so way to go congo but russia is the biggest expansion mvp right now they even took a bunch of provinces up here from france and they made france release finland and sweden this war just happened not too long ago and they even made france release bohemia here as we can see and they have taken some provinces for themselves but not too much france have been expanding into the maghreb as we can see taking some provinces from morocco and the ottomans they haven't gone revolutionary yet <laughs> they do have a 656 ruler though so if the revolution from siam spreads to them they actually might we might even see napoleon in this campaign which would be pretty awesome it's still a little early for that though we have Colombia popping out in South America. This was Portugal's colony, as you guys can remember. 
and it's January 1st, 1821. Basically the end of the game and let's take a look at what everyone has been up to. So France, they started out as the number one great power and they're still the number one great power. They didn't expand in Europe like I thought they would. I thought they would be going to war with Russia, but that didn't happen. Instead, they did expand slightly into the Maghreb region, taking all these provinces here. They did lose land to Russia though, over here in Bohemia and in Scandinavia as well. They did amass a massive colonial empire though, with French Brazil, French Peru, French La Plata, Mexico, and Canada, with some subjects being disloyal. Either way, they're still the number one great power. And uh, taking a look at Paris, well, it has a 168 development. So I don't know what France was doing, probably concentrating development a lot. And they have four monuments in Paris. They have the Notre Dame, of course, at tier three, Versailles at tier three as well. But they also moved the Stonehenge here from Dorset or Hampshire, one of these provinces. And they moved the Inukshuk and it's at tier three, so the Anukshuk monument starts off in one of these provinces right here. So they have four monuments and 168 development. And of course, it's the highest developed province in the world by quite some margin. Next, we have Russia. They started off as the Eastern Europe super region. And I think they are the MVP for this scenario. They have taken over quite a few provinces in Anatolia from the Ottomans, but mostly they have been expanding into today's biggest loser, the Mongol Empire. As you can see, Russia started out this big. Eastern Europe and now they are this big pretty cool they did even reach this coast to their number three on the great powers list and they're a military hegemon speaking of the mongol empire definitely today's biggest loser they started out as the biggest nation with one of the most powerful governments but i guess their weak economy crushed them in the end and now they're relegated to just a few provinces in central asia a few provinces here and a few provinces in east siberia moving on we have japan they started out pretty weak in the far east super region losing some provinces initially to ming and the mongol empire but now they have grown quite a lot over here in east Siberia and in China as well. Next we have Ming, another big loser for today. They did start out with the only super region that actually shrunk when I was creating these nations and they're even smaller now. I thought they would be basically wiped off the map but that didn't happen. And we have here another contender for the MVP for today, Revolutionary Siam. They started out with the East Indies super region. They did went colonial taking over Australia from Bharat. They did release a few tributaries in the beginning but that didn't stop them at all. Maybe like two or three nations and they did expand quite a bit into the India super region, into the China super region, and into the Tartari super region over here in Tibet. And they went revolutionary, which is something that has happened for the first time in these what-if scenarios. Of course, Japan is also revolutionary. Now they became revolutionary, stopped being revolutionary, and now they're revolutionary again, which is pretty funny to see. Then we have India. They were kind of laying low the entire campaign. Siam and Persia took some border provinces from them, not too much, and they have expanded quite a bit into Tibet. Basically, they were doing nothing. Their biggest success was establishing colonies in Australia, which they lost, by the way, and California and Cascadia. Then we have Persia. They started out weak, losing against the Ottomans, but then they have taken some land from the Ottomans and from India and from Mongolia as well. So not too bad. I think they have changed the least so far. The Ottomans, of course, started out in the Levant super region and they have expanded quite a bit, although they did lose provinces to Russia and they were trading Constantinople between them and Russia back and forth all the time. Possibly the biggest surprise in this campaign is Congo. They started out with Southern Africa. They were basically the lowest developed out of any super region at the start of the game. And they're fetishes, not the strongest religion, but they did expand quite a lot into Morocco especially. And they did even take provinces from the Ottomans. They seem to be losing now, but no big deal. This is what South America looks like. Colombia was Portuguese colony. Portugal did pop out from these two provinces and we can see that France has given them some more as well. They did establish this colony, but it gained independence and now it's Colombia. We have the three French colonies. Mexico. Some strong North American nations are Lakota, Shawnee, Usa, Mohawk. On the great powers list we have France with almost double the development of Revolutionary Siam followed by Russia, Bharat, Congo, Persia, Ottomans and Revolutionary Japan. So of course Ming, the Mongol Empire and Morocco are the biggest losers. The biggest army is owned by Russia with almost 2 million troops followed by France, Revolutionary Siam and then there is a huge gap between them and Japan, the Ottomans, Persia, Congo, Bharat. France's colonies have more troops 
troops than the Mongol Empire, Ming and Morocco. France has the biggest total income with 3,000 ducats a month, more than double of Russia at 1,300. Then we have Siam, Persia, Congo, Bharat, Japan, the Ottomans, some French colonies, Ming, the Mongol Empire and Morocco here at the bottom. The most valuable trade note is Champagne, followed by the English Channel, Malacca, Persia, Novgorod, Venice and so on. So what would happen if every super region was a nation? Well, the ones that I expected to do really well, like the Mongol Empire in Tartary, didn't do so well. On the other hand, we did expect Ming to collapse and I definitely didn't expect for Russia to expand this much. Of course, these nations were alliance locked a lot of the time since there was only 11 nations as opposed to more than 500. So we didn't see too many wars, but we definitely got some huge surprises like Congo, Siam and Russia expanding quite a lot. Keep an eye out for the next video where we will explore what would happen if every region is a country and maybe even what if every area is a country in the future. So keep an eye out for those and let me know in the comments what is the next what if scenario that I should explore. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like and subscribe. Only 10% of you are subscribed, so it would really mean a lot. And I've also launched channel memberships. So if you want to support the channel with more than subscribing, you can check out the join button down below and join the Discord. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.